the show. You play two characters in this okay. show: Hercules Mulligan and mm -hmm. James Madison. Yeah. And so, why does it make sense to have one actor play those two roles? Because I feel like um, it's two sides of the same coin. I feel like I feel like when you watch the show, they 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 come off so different, but actually, they they want similar things consistently throughout the, they just want to better the country. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's something that's very consistent, but they go about it two different ways. So when I was learning the, the parts, I was like, how can I make these two parts completely different? You know, between Hercules Mulligan and James Madison, I feel like there's, there, there's something that's to be said about how they're written so differently, how one character will go out and will be spinning rapid fire in a way when he finally gets to speak and one will, is way more reserved. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, that, I think that that's why playing, having one, one person play both of those characters actually lands really well because I feel like if you can find the balance between uh, yourself being a part of both of them, um, then I feel like it actually brings the show up because it's like you, you were just going about a different way to get the same job done. So it's like you're activated already when you're going into the second act in a way. Does that make any sense? Yeah, so does it, that, does it change how you interact with people in the real world, having that kind of perspective about how people go about things and all wanting the same thing? Yeah, it definitely makes me think a little slower. I feel like I used to be like uh, really fast. I'm from New York, so I feel like I talk really fast mm -hmm. too. I just get everything out really quickly. Since I've done this show, since I've 2019, I've actually seen things from a different perspective. I feel like because of Madison, I, I, take, I take my time a little bit and I like to be more observant. And I feel like that's something I learned through this show, actually, mm. um, because Mulligan is way more like, I'll do what you want me to do. I'll do whatever I have to do. And Madison is like, I'll tell you what you have to do. And this is how I have to do it. And we're going to just, we'll be here and we'll wait. And then when we get there, he's more similar to Burr, I think. I think he's the closest to Burr in the show. Yeah. More successful version of Burr. Right. Slightly bigger brain. <laughs> Not that uh, you're biased at all. I yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> So what is your intermission process like? Um, not only just, you know, kind of changing into the, the, the wardrobe, which of yeah. course is, is a thing, but, but changing your mindset and becoming James Madison after this fast talking Hercules Mulligan. Right. I, um, I take my time during intermission to really um, let myself uh, come down in a way, because I feel like the whole first act is like really, really just so high energy. I like give like, if, I, if I'm at 100, I, I try to give like 200 because it's like there's so much that I have to give that by the time I play Madison, if I don't get all of that energy out, I feel like I'll be doing a little bit too much as the part. Um, so I, I spend time talking to different people backstage and like getting myself into a more calm mindset and taking my time with people before I go out on the stage because there aren't too many people I actually interact with on, in the show as Madison. There's about three people in the show I talk to as Madison. So I try to stay pretty reserved as soon as I get done with the first act. And I think it actually works pretty well because the less people I see before I go out there, I feel like the better interaction I have with the people that I have to have because everything just seems way more important. The stakes are higher in a way. You know, especially in the first act, I feel like I mean, I feel like the whole show, everybody's having a ton of fun, yeah. but especially you. I think that you might be having the most fun. I, I you know, <laughs> I can't disagree. I have so much fun when I'm doing this show. I feel like, I feel like I'm out there partying sometimes. I feel like the dance moves, the, the rapping, the, the singing of it all, I feel like really connected to the material. Um, and I feel it really accurately represents where I'm feeling every time I do the show. I, it, it doesn't feel like work when I go out there. Mm -hmm. It feels like I'm going out there and I get to be a part of myself. I like to bring a part of myself into both characters and I feel closer to Mulligan in a way as who I am as a person. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm loud and I'm, I'm boisterous and I, I definitely like to take the attention in a room sometimes and for better or for worse, I, can, I know that that's Mulligan as well in a way. He'll, mm -hmm. He, he goes in and he wants you to know that he's there. Um, from the very 
first rap he has when he is one, like in the tavern scene, everybody's, everybody's saying what they're saying, they're introducing themselves, and he starts to bra, bra, that's who I am, I, you know what I mean, just right out, out of the gate. Um, so I, I, from, the, from the very beginning of the show, I'm just always excited to just get all of the, the, the adrenaline I have in me that's building up. It just continues to build throughout the show. It's like a steady progression. Your um, favorite part of the show? Yeah, Yorktown is my favorite part okay. of the show. Yeah. It's, it's, I wish that I could, could not be so biased for myself, but I really love doing that part. That part is so fun to me. Um, and I also like the dance in uh, Helpless Satisfied. I always have fun doing that too. It's so fun to dance with, um, with, with uh, Peggy and it's fun to be out there with the dancers too because they're killing it. So it's like when I, any moment I get to dance with them, I'm always like, this is, this is fun because I'm looking around and they're all doing, they give me like the, the simpler version of it, but I'm still out there doing it with them. <laughs> they call it the mover version. <laughs> yeah, so let's talk about the ensemble because they bring so much. When you see the show live as opposed to Disney Plus, which we love, yeah. is you see so much more going on on the stage all right. the time. You're like, I mean, I was looking around the whole time. There's, they're, they, they are our storytellers. They, they get us moving. The show um, is incredible, but the show without the choreography that it has, I don't know if it, if it, if it would land the same. It, it, everything together as a whole, I think, is why the show is so successful, because I feel like our ensemble drives the principles to feel, in a way. Anytime that we're, that we're on the stage, there's usually somebody else on the stage. Whether it be Byrne, all of the women are out, are out there behind Eliza, whether it's like meet them inside and then they're closing the door, you know, they're like, they, they are physically showing the audience, like, this is the room we're in and this is the vibe and this is how we're feeling. So they do half of the work for us, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's, it's so hard, the stuff that they do. We're lucky enough as, as uh, the principal actors to, to be able to speak and to be able to sing and get our emotions out like that. And it's so hard what they do. They, they, are, they have to get their emotions out and they have to tell the story through their body, just through their physical body. And I mean, they do it every night. They do it every single night and they do it well every single night. They're, they, they, they're superheroes to me. I'm like, it's like magic. I couldn't do it. <laughs> like for sure. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it. Okay, let's do a little rapid fire questions. Cool. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Um, pork barbecue or beef barbecue? Um, pork barbecue. Krispy Kreme or Dunkin' Donuts? Krispy Kreme. Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Duke or Carolina? Duke. What is a toboggan? <laughs> I can't tell you. <laughs> Mountains or coast? Coast. A night on the town or a curl up on the couch? A night on the town. Name the contemporary of your character for whom Greensboro is named. Um, His name is in the show. Right. I, I, I feel like, I know I don't say the line, Henry Knox and I know that it's Green, but I don't know if it's <laughs> Charles Green. I don't know what the name Nathaniel. is. Nathaniel. Nathaniel Green. Henry Knox. Yeah. Nathaniel, yeah. Nathaniel yeah. Green. No. Wanted to hire you. Wow. Okay. It just came to me. You gotcha. It just came to uh, me. Aaron Burr, victim or villain? Closer to a victim than a villain. Of himself, I guess, of his own mind. I don't think he's a villain. Any, any kind of like lasting thoughts you want to leave people with? When they leave, what do you want them to walk away with and to do or to feel? I want them to feel inspired to just let their minds create what they want them to create, to like, to be boundless, to be limitless, to, to leave and think, Oh, if they can do that, then I can do the next thing. That's what I want people to think. Like, if we're doing it, then they can do more. They can do even better. That's how I feel when I, when I leave shows, too. Like, I'm really inspired. I'm like, if they can do that, I want to do the next thing. That's how I want people to feel. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, good to talk to you. Yeah, yeah.